In terms of impacts, look, there's a ton of things. I'll start off to give you guys a chance to, to think. Um, so yeah, I'm proud of Just Democrats. And yeah, it's been an interesting, sometimes bumpy ride, right? Um, but I remember when Ro Khanna came here and he said, yeah, I'll join Just Democrats. And he was an incumbent and had no reason to do it. It was nothing but risk for him. It involved <laughs> primarying incumbents and he was gonna catch a ton of crap for that and he knew it. Uh, he was already one of the guys who didn't take corporate PAC money, so that was easy, but it was good. And he was already an honest and decent person. And then when we started and nobody thought we can get anybody, and then we won those four spectacular victories, AOC, Rashida Tlaib, Ilhan Omar, Ayanna Presley. For the establishment, that one left a mark, uh, and, and it's still leaving a mark. Mm -hmm. And Jamal Bowman and Cori Bush and Marie Newman and others came in afterwards. Uh, and. Um, and so, along with you guys, and by the way, you guys put in two and a half million dollars in that first 2018 cycle, okay? If you hadn't done that, I don't know that that crew exists, and certainly exists in that form, because they became friends and they became mm -hmm. the squad because they were all Injustice Democrats together, right? Katie Porter was in the same class, but was not in Justice Democrats, so she didn't become part of the squad, for better or for worse, right? And so she does wonderful work, so does Jamie Raskin, etc. But that's what brought them together, and you guys did that. And and I don't know if all four win, I don't know if all four lose without you guys, right? But it's certainly possible that two of them wouldn't have won, right? Some of those races were close. They were I really, really close. The results as they were coming in. Yes, and obviously AOC's was literally the most amazing political upset in American history. And so uh, we pulled that off together, guys. And so the mainstream media, you know, we tell you every once in a while, but yeah, they, we, we annoy them, we bother them because we're constantly criticizing them. I, I get it from their perspective, but they're doing it wrong. And it's, <laughs> and it's, it's a similar thing as what you talk about with shows and stuff here. When you can't pay off enough people and they say, we're coming for your donors. They can tell these folks, we're coming for your donors, they'll be like, okay. Yeah. And they back down right away, but we won't back down, and that's because of you guys. And so it drives them nuts. So they're not gonna wanna give us and give you guys a lot of credit for starting an entire wing of the Democratic Party. But you did, but you did, okay? And they're there and they're strong and they're only gonna get stronger. By the way, ninaturner.com slash hello, let's make that much stronger. NinaTurner.com slash hello. See, I'm still doing it, I'm still plugging. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> and, and, and so, that on the, and then I'll end on this, and then I wanna let you guys talk the rest of the time. Um, the night that Trump won, we were at our lowest, but at that moment, instead of giving up, what we decided to do was fight back harder. And that's where Justice Democrats came from. And Ida Rodriguez says that quote all the time, which I love her for. She said, uh, she reminded me of it. She said, I turned to you on air and said, Cenk, we lost. Now what are we gonna do? And I said, now we fight, okay? And the idea that I told you guys about at that time was, we're gonna build a pirate ship of progressives. We're gonna pull it up to the Democratic Party's aircraft carrier, <laughs> and we're gonna board the ship and then we're gonna take the ship. What cost us in 2016, and this monster got elected, was democratic weakness. So we are going to use democratic weakness against them. And we have now boarded the ship, we haven't yet taken it over, but they're on the ship and the takeover has begun. We will eventually take the over, the corporate Democrats are too weak by their nature, and we will run the Democratic Party. If you haven't noticed, there's two different kinds of criticisms that many opponents to Democrats have. You see the, the, kind, of, the kind of criticisms they have for um, uh, Nancy Pelosi's and the Chuck Schumer's versus the AOC's, Rashida Tlaib's, Ayanna Presley's. It's different. It's just straight for look at these limousine libs, and you know what they're saying, and they do this and they do that. They don't really mean what they say. All the attacks on many of these younger, uh, more hungry, folks that wanna follow through on their promises when they campaigned is, can you believe they said that? What is this policy that ALC wants? Can you believe she's talking about the Green New Deal? They have to address the issues, cuz that's what they're talking about. Rather than, oh man, you know, which we did as well, Pelosi in her ice cream freezer, cuz that's what she's putting herself out there was. Pelosi and Chuck Schumer standing looking like the farmer and the wife, because that's the stuff they do. 
and, and the kneeling down with the kente cloths, because that's what they do. It's a lot of show, and you'll be able to see the two differences. So this may be like, we seem like there's this fight when it comes to how conservatives are addressing many uh, 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 progressives, the actual progressives of the party, and how much more viciously they come for them. But that's a bit of a badge of honor, because those are the ones that they're most afraid of. These are the folks that are continuing through with what they said they'll do, even if it's not all there yet. They're still continuing what they said they'll do, and they're afraid that it just might happen. And their biggest allies could be some of these most establishment Democrats who are just window dressing and then doing nothing behind the scenes. As you said, they still have the control, but we're seeing the differences here, and maybe even Democratic voters do too. Yeah, John. I mean, I think one of the big ones, obviously, you talked about us, you know, helping raise awareness of a lot of candidates, including many who didn't win, but might run again and might win the next time around. Like, how many primary nights have we done <laughs> over the past years? Like, literally coming in, everybody together, full production for one state's primaries, because we believe all of these elections matter. No, the mainstream media is not gonna cover this. And we didn't win a lot of those, but you grind it out and, and gradually you you get a suite of people in Congress that are awesome. But I think the large one obviously is, you know, I'm sure he would have been fine anyway. But we were very important early on in raising awareness about Bernie Sanders' presidential campaign and providing a place for community to come together for coverage of it, discussion, like to take it seriously. It wasn't just a joke to us, like the mainstream media was addressing it. Like, oh, it's him and you know uh, Mike uh, O'Malley or whatever. Like, ah, it's inevitable. Hillary's gonna win, whatever. It doesn't matter what they do. But we knew that it did matter. And even though he lost and that was devastating, so much of what's true about our politics has been fundamentally altered by his run. And we helped to make sure that people knew that he was a person that you can get excited about and you can and should take seriously. Thanks for watching The Young Turks, we really appreciate it. Another way to show support is through YouTube memberships. You'll get to interact with us more. There's live chat emojis, badges. You've got emojis of me, Anna, John, JR, so those are super fun. But you also get playback of our exclusive member only shows and specials right after they air. So all of that, all you gotta do is click that join button right underneath the video. Thank you.